Let me get to Tomorrow War. Tomorrow War is an Amazon Prime film, and I am not going to uh, pretend to you that Tomorrow War is some great film or anything like that, because that's not true. But I want to be honest, man. Some of these critics, <laughs> they are terrible, man. These critics don't even... They, Look, there's been a long, I go to, I go to a screen, I've been to screenings and sometimes you just don't fit in. You learn real quick. You're not going to fit in. Right. Um, I remember I sat down at a screen of Lucy one time and I had my son with me, Jake, cause we had seen it. Uh, and, uh, we both were like, this movie's, I don't understand what's happening. This movie's turned into a mess. So I went to the next screening and I believe it was civil war, but it was definitely a Marvel film. There's more people there. And the guy next to us wanted to strike up conversation about how much he loved Lucy. And we sat there just like, oh, my gosh, he's part of the problem. He's part of the reason that we have these crappy films. All right. So Tomorrow War. So Tomorrow War, the problem with the critics is they're not attacking. They're not always attacking the film for the right reason. Right. So if you want to see Tomorrow War, I won't really spoil it too much because it's still convoluted. I, it could, we could spend two hours talking about Tomorrow War, but it's three films, right? The opening film has to do with Chris Pratt's character. He was a soldier. Now he's a school teacher, kind of down on his luck. The, the, the people from the future come back because they need more soldiers to fight these aliens that have shown up. And the first part of the movie is like a video game. It's like if you were going to stand and ride, or like a theme park, right? If you're going to stand in line to ride a ride, they made a ride out of this. This is what it'd be like. You're zapped to the future. You're going to shoot aliens. You're inside the video game. They got the, the normies that are sucked up in all this, so they don't last long. The first part of the movie, not so bad. But then there's this hard transition, and we move again. And you have this middle. So it's all science talk. It's more drama, character development, all that. Then you have the action sequence. That, that comes along and it's more like alien sci-fi stuff kind of hit a lot of cliches a lot of those kinds of things and then go to the third act so again the hard stops three separate movies hard stop then it becomes like an 80s 90s movie major plot holes and issues here it's got the cliche like schwarzenegger stallone explosion where oh it, it's fantastic I, I i laughed out loud like, the movie is fun okay there's um three or four you know, secondary characters that were entertaining. I mean, their stories don't necessarily make sense, but at least there's entertainment there. Now, J.K. Simmons plays uh, Chris Pratt's dad, and he he's fantastic in every scene. He got really buff for the role, and he's he's fantastic. He could he could have been on screen a whole lot more. Okay, so the critics they they have some reason to hate on the movie to a certain extent. However, um hating on the movie for the right reason is important, right? So this is Reason Magazine. Reason Magazine didn't, I don't feel saw the same movie that I saw. Maybe, and maybe I'm missing something here, right? So their movie, they saw, Tomorrow War is a tortured global warming metaphor disguised as a dull action movie. First off, this movie's not dull. Okay, it can be dumb and it is kind of dumb. But it's not dull. The global warming metaphor has to do with the element at the end of the third act. These, these creatures evidently had landed back in Chris Pratt's time, like 30-something years ago, in the ice. So therefore, they thawed out, and that's why they showed up later on. That's literally the global warming element that they went for. So I want you to read his words. This is, this is a critic. Like, why take the credentials away? This is crazy. All right. I hope you can see, obviously I've got this shared right, so you cannot see it. Let me make it bigger. There's a little bit bigger. And let me see if I can get it just a little more. All right, I don't know if you can read this with me. You see, the aliens aren't intelligent because they didn't fly themselves to Earth. Instead, we are probably planet-clearing bioweapons being transported as cargo on a ship that crashed in the Russian tundra hundreds of years ago and were trapped in the ice until climate change thawed the glacier and set them free. Okay, okay, it's factually true, but this is not some global warming lecture piece. That That is not valid. Forrester, who's Chris Pratt's character, did you catch that? Forrest, get it? Such a clever writer. Discovers with the help of his volcano-obsessed kid, one of the kids, and it was a funny sequence. It is dumb that they would turn to a kid in high school for this part, 
but it was literally like a, who do you know? Do you know somebody? Because no one was helping them. No one was going to uh, approve a mission to Russia when the aliens aren't here yet. It's just a theory. So there was the government turned them down. No one was going to help them. It's like, do you know anyone who knows anything about volcanoes? Kid uses the internet and had the answer. It's implausible and ridiculous in some ways, but come on. It, it, I, I get it, but obviously there's an agenda here. Now, I will agree with the last part because it says, you see in the end, it's all about saving the children. And the way to save the children is for adult today's adults to act now before it's too late because our future is so precious and blah, blah, blah. So, okay. I mean, that part I do, I, I can definitely at least relate to at least a little bit because I thought it was a little ridiculous and actually kind of comical that the – Zoomers and millennials couldn't take care of this themselves. They had to get people from our time to do it. That actually kind of made me laugh. It's not that big a deal, um, but it was it was something. So there's been a lot of Chris Pratt hate as well. Uh, yeah. So this was this was another one I I thought was just a little. It's just so over the top. No, let me uh, hit the right thing here. Hit you this. This is. Uh, uh, the big villain is the script, the nonsensical script, uh, which is true in some ways. But again, it's so over the top where um, where they're going with this. He gives it one star. Oh, man, I cannot get all this nonsense. Stop popping. Their website's terrible. Oh, no wonder it was so slow to open. It will not close. I'm just getting out of all this. No, there it goes. Okay. I had it up. Sure didn't want to cooperate. So the blame lies. Where's blame lies? Let me find the right spot. Cause all right. So the blame lies with the ridiculous plot, the uneven characterization that spoil whatever fun the story offers. Okay, that's not horrible. That's a fair analysis in some ways. And the bizarre stuff that keeps happening, you're meant to take everything at face value. Well, yeah. I mean, that's kind of the premise of most alien science fiction movies. If you were a self-aware, dumb action movie like, hey, say, the recent Mortal Kombat, the silliness would be more plausible. Okay, now you're getting carried away. Or palatable, sorry. The script wants you to take every daft thing seriously. Seriously? Like, that's... I don't know. It. This This film is a great escape piece and I, I got that but i don't know i don't know i i think the person's being uh, i think i think the person is conflating the problems with the story in in just the wrong way um this was probably the most appalling of the reviews because this is this is and that one example there are there are countless examples by the way uh this is the example of the hit piece on Chris Pratt. They, they've turned on Chris Pratt, right? Because he may not be uh, part of their club. He kind of be part of the uh, Hollywood elite clubs and, and things like that. And he may not be 100% in line with that. So, therefore, they've kind of turned on him a little bit. And this one, it's the, uh, the uh, ultimate salute to working class heroism. That's how this was worded. Can you believe that? It's just great. It's just so much disdain. So it comes from this, this uh, article. He did an interview to Men's Fitness. This is back when he was doing Jurassic World, the sequel to Jurassic World. I don't see personal stories that necessarily resonate with me because they're not my stories. The voice of average blue-collar American isn't necessarily represented in Hollywood. Amen, brother. Amen, brother. It's... Yeah, you're absolutely right. Everything and the disdain of this guy is 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 right there, right? It's oh, I don't know. I I don't know. All right, so let me just keep moving through this guy's remarks because it's this it's just this tells it all right here. This is a shot from the movie. These guys are great. These guys are great. They were fantastic. This guy's hysterical. Oh my gosh, he was so good. Wait, wait, see if something else is actually better written. But he did he did a great job. All right. All right. So here's here's where you can see that the agenda of poly of a polygon, of course. Is the objective of the Tomorrow War, a movie in which every female, black or POC character, plays second fiddle to Dan Strong White Guy. Okay, that's not true, by the way. The significant female lead in the character, and I don't want to spoil the twist, is 
obviously way superior to Dan the whole time. There's a little twist there where Dan holds his own, but that's just ridiculous. There's no PIC, POC characters that are female that really matter. So that's what this person's making an objection to. But it's not Chris Pratt's character's fault in that. That's just the way there's other characters. These It's these guys that matter. These guys that matter, right? So, all right. So, that's, so you see the leftist agenda there. It's all about POC and feminist stuff. He's worthy of more than a stable job and a lovely family, right? So, again... I want, you know, there's, there's a moment where someone says, thank you for your service or whatever. And it's like, we get it. This average blue collar American is worthy of all your admiration. He's not just some average dude. He was like this military operative who just got out of the military. He's, it, it's, it's in the opening sequence where he's like, I want to go into research. I didn't want to stay in the military. I didn't want to become a professional contractor or go on police force or whatever. So it, I don't know. It, it there's there are funny lines and there are some good moments, but to give these move to give this movie and to slam it in the way that they are is just entirely unfair and absurd. And I would recommend having a good time watching it. Don't expect some great film or some uh, incredible thoughtful uh, film or something that's going to compete with independence day or even edge of tomorrow it's in that same vein but it is not it's not a very good film um in some ways but in other ways it's entertaining and it's fun it's not full of a bunch of woke garbage it's not full of a bunch of uh, agendas and things like that global warming stuff is really really reaching in my opinion i'm not saying that's not the message that is kind of there but it is not presented in that way it's not even carved out in that way so that's insane. I don't know. I'd recommend checking it out. It's, it, I'm talking about like a, you know, two and a half, two star kind of movie. We're not talking about a great film, but it's at least worthy of some time. And at least it's entertaining. That guy that's talking about how it's dull, that critic is out of their mind. Tomorrow War is never dull. It can be dumb, but not dull. So. Mm -hmm.